Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of On the Mic with Mike. I'm your host, Mike Larkin, and joining me today is former WWE Diva, a member of the Rookie Diva competition, from those that remember from No Way Out 2005, the one, the only, Miss Rochelle Lowen. Rochelle, it's a pleasure and a privilege. How are you? Hola, I'm great. First and foremost, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to say as a young man growing up in the uh, in the 90s and as we get towards the ruthless aggression era, as it's known, being a huge part and a huge fan of what we had going on with a lot of the diva searches and the rookie diva competitions, really exuding accentuating a lot of the female talent. It was great to see you along with many talents like Michelle McCool, Joy Giovanni, Amy Weber, Lauren Jones. My goodness gracious, you guys did amazing work. And I got to say the nostalgia feels is here. I really enjoyed your tenure in the WWE. <laughs> thanks thanks yeah it was fun really interesting time i have to ask you because i remember at this time so 2005 i remember as a young man 13 years old going right into middle school really showcasing and really showcasing what we saw from like the days of the wwe from the days when lita and trish strat is still around doing their thing their tenure's coming to an end and the future is coming into fruition so i gotta ask you the wwe it's world wrestling entertainment one of the biggest conglomerates in professional wrestling if not the i have to ask you how did that gravitation go for you towards the wwe how did that whole involvement really come into fruition well, yeah, it's. <laughs> I, w- I want to circle back to what you just said. It's yeah. definitely the biggest platform for wrestling, without a doubt. Right. <laughs> uh, and how did that come about? Um, well, funnily enough, uh, I actually was um, sent out to do one job uh, by my agency in Los Angeles to to uh, walk two of the wrestlers out onto stage. It was just supposed to be like a little gig. And uh, I had a a business card on me and I walked up to Vince McMahon and uh, are you still there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And I, I uh, gave him my card and I shook his hand and I said, I'd like to work with you guys. And, um, it was interesting because I think about six months later to, it was at least six months to a year later, uh, Vince McMahon and his right hand man, John Laurinaitis, they actually had been looking for me. They did a diva search throughout the whole world, or I don't know how much of the world. And I was still on their mind. I didn't even try out, but I guess I made such an impression on them that uh, they had to, they, I was just on their mind like a year later. And so they tried to contact my agency uh, to get a hold of me. And my agency and I had split. Uh, so I had left them. And so my agency wouldn't give the WWE my phone number. So they actually had to jump through a bunch of loops to, hoops rather to find me. And they eventually found me on Facebook and contacted me there but it's just it's it's kind of interesting because I didn't try out it wasn't even it was yeah and they just persisted in looking for me so kind of an interesting story well, I think what's great about it, too, is I think how we all in our things in life and whatever tenure that we have, it's wonderful to see how things kind of come into fruition. And for me, like looking again at this time, like 2005, where John Cena's on top, Batista's on top, you have Trish Stratus and the women's being the focal point. And then we have a lot of great women like yourself and Christy Hemi from the 2004 Diva Search and God Rest Her Soul, Ashley Massaro from the 2005. It's really great to see. And of course, Michelle McCool, what she's done in yourself. I got to take it to no way out here because here's the the funny part about it we had bikini contests we had talent competition and then we had everything really that encompassed the evening gown and everything from that talent competition but really what stood out to me and it's probably a lot of people kind of gave you a little heckling for it but i always love the joke of how do you make a kleenex dance you put a little boogie in it i gotta say mm-hmm. very funny i love that from back in the day i thought that was very common, <laughs> very witty yeah well we had to think of something on the fly we weren't so scripted so, yeah. 
it's just it's like stuff like that you see and i think really would encompass that i really also did enjoy and i look at it from a stance too as well you guys had a lot of great moments like backstage i know you did some stuff with kurt angle with the joy giovanni thing when she was feuding with the big show and being aligned with the big show and kurt angle like being around those stars like getting those little moments which you see nowadays in professional wrestling doing a lot of extra work with people really working with social medias and stuff like that it's really great to see the little nuances that really encompasses a character and the overall production of the show Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so for you, like working like around that environment, there's Kurt Angle, there's the big show, like looking at these names, like for you, how was that for you just working these little backstage segments and really being involved? I mean, it was a short tenure, mind you, but God dang, man, you have hit the mold here for as far as modeling the WWE. You're really very multifaceted. So I got to ask you about the whole like these stars that you were surrounded, like the Kurt Angles and the big shows. How was that environment for you? Um. It was, uh, I don't know, but it was fascinating. It was fun, interesting characters. A lot of the personas were carried backstage. <laughs> there wasn't much of a difference between who these guys are on stage and off stage. So I found that kind of interesting. Yeah. Understood. And I look at it from a stance too as well. What's really great about it too is the art form. And one of the big quotes I always like to say on this show is life is an art form and we're all applying our crafts. Like for you, like for modeling, and I've seen a lot of your imagery with what you've done from, you know, the muscles and fitness and everything that you encompass, because God dang, man, you, I'll say it right now, you still look, still look amazing. You've always looked and really- you're very welcome. Truth is truth. We have a lot of beautiful women in this world and all women are queens. So you get to show that off and really go into the personal training side of things, which I got to ask you, how does that make you feel? You're doing your own business, your personal trainer, you're doing what you're doing, helping a lot of people really motivate them. And we all come in different shapes and sizes. So how does that make you feel doing what your job is and really helping these people gather along and really get themselves into conditioning? Yeah, it's rewarding. I like, I like kicking people's ass. <laughs> <laughs> It's really rewarding to see people come along. Yeah, it really is. And for you, I mean, it's one of those things too, as well, when you have that motivation, I think, especially with today, but we have mental health and we have everything that goes on in general. I think we need that as people. I mean, in today's society, it's very divided, you know, everything's subjective in the world, but I think it's great to have that united, not divided front and having that unity of bringing people together and really showcasing their overall essence and really making them a better person. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Ah, you're very welcome. Truth is truth. Now for you, it's I, what I also love about it too, as well, like you've done a lot of work with Playboy and stuff and you've done Playboy plus and really the broadcasting side of things. I wanted to touch upon that because I got to say, you have that presence about you and I've seen a lot of your reels from your broadcasting stuff. You really do have a way to gravitate and really engage a lot of the audience. And I, I include, I mean that with the almost sincere and respect. It's one of those things where a lot of people have that gravitational pull and really have that elegance about it. And you've done a lot of great work in the broadcasting world. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. You know, I, I definitely love entertainment. <laughs> yeah. And I like broadcasting. That's for sure. Yeah. That's what I'm educated in. So. Well, that's, well, I'm curious about that field as well, because I mean, it, it led you to what we have with modeling WWE and all the multifaceted stuff, but how did the broadcasting really come into fruition? What really made you want to go down that route as well? Well, it actually didn't lead me to the other things. It, uh, I, after the WWE, um, and uh, in living in Hollywood, I moved back to Canada and I took communications uh, in university. And so, yeah, and that's what led me into broadcasting. And so, yeah, I broadcasted the news on radio and television. And it was just, it, it seemed like something great at the time, but um, the news is no longer anything that I'd like to endeavor into. Hey, yeah. I hear you. Well, I hear you. <laughs> with everything that goes on in the news, too, as well. I mean, especially with everyday society and current events, it's like it's one of those things where it's like you have the Internet and you have everything in general out of your fingertips because technology has advanced so much. But it's also it's like, God dang, man, like, do you really want to be involved in stuff of what we see happening in the world? And just in general, it's really I don't want to say it's like a downer, but it's also at the same time. It's like a lot of people. It's, for, it's very hard to watch the news with all the tragedies going on in the world, you know? Mm hmm. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. 
and I mean, with everything that's going on, and one name I did have to mention, I mentioned earlier in regards to like the diva search, like Ashley Massaro. And I mean, as a young man growing up on Long Island, New York, and being around that time in 2005, we really lost someone <laughs> with such a beautiful spirit. I mean, that I got to say, that was probably one of the most tragic and one of the most heartbreaking losses as far as like what we see in women's wrestling, because it was really, really tragic to see such a beautiful spirit just gone too soon, you know? I know. Yeah, no, I was I was definitely disturbed by it, too. Yeah, she was amazing. So, and I mean, it's one of those things too, as well, where professional wrestling, we have a lot of people that have evolved and done a lot of things outside of the auspices of professional wrestling, much like yourself. I mean, back in the day, it was very interesting because there wasn't a lot of like big indies. Everything's just getting started up to what we have now, where there's a lot of different variations and different companies and stuff. So, I mean, in general, from all walks of life, from professional wrestling to modeling, it's great to see like the evolution of how far we've come from the years 2005 to 2022. And a lot of people have really grown as people, and it's great to see a lot of people showcasing their talents, even in corporations with social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And I think for you too, as well. And I, what I always loved about you, Rochelle, is besides the fact of the, of the joke, which was hilarious, my bad, just to reiterate that point, but the entertainment mm -hmm. side of things, what I also love too, as well, the sex appeal side of things, and especially with women, because while I'm a big factor in is beauty, strength, and dominance, which is the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are, you have the sex appeal side mixed with that talent, and it's still encompassed in women's wrestling in general. You most certainly exude and accentuated that sex appeal. And again, it's much credit where it's deserved, but the sex appeal side of things goes a long way, and it really showcased throughout your work, throughout your entire run. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And, and I think what's great about it too is as well, I mean, you're you're in Canada where we look at Brett the Hitman Hard and Stampede Wrestling. Canada's a big hotbed for professional wrestling and everything in general. So we got to see everybody from Canada and different variations and different diversities and stuff in all levels of sports. I think that really adds on to it. So once more, kudos and respect. And I can't wait to see what you do in the future with your personal training, just whipping gas and kicking everybody's ass and putting people in shape, you know? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited. And and for you, I mean, I mean, let's talk about the personal training side of things because COVID was a big like haven, obviously, with everything that went on in the world. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of lives, but also gave us a lot of creativity to really showcase and exude and accentuate a lot of people's creativities, like at home gyms and stuff to really get people motivated and stay positively proactive. So during the COVID phase and everything that happened there, I mean, we've somewhat got back to some normalcy. How did that go for you doing your workouts from home and really showcasing your stuff? How did the COVID affect with you and everything that went on in general from the fitness side of things? Um. <laughs> It didn't affect me, actually, uh, overly. I, I think more and more people, actually, it, it affected me well. I, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I think a lot of people uh, went one of two ways during COVID. Either they gained weight and got depressed and maybe sick, or they found time to actually work out and get themselves in shape. And so those people, the latter, they came to me, and that was perfect. Yeah. And I think that's great about it too, as well. And I think, and well, here's the thing about it. You don't want to drive yourself insane because a lot of people have gone through a lot of stuff from COVID and it's really, truly affected a lot of people and it's horrible, but you also got to look at the positive side of things. It's like, okay, it's another obstacle. It's another thing that we face as people. It's another thing for the country. Everything in life is an obstacle, but how do you want to go through that obstacle? Do you want to overcome it or do you want to stay in that lane? And I think a lot of people are really rising above that. And it really shows the strength of us as a country, as a nation and as people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I got to say for you, and I do have a couple final things I want to add, and I'm going to say this to you, Ms. Rochelle Lowe, and anytime you want to come back on for round two, I'd be happy to help you. It's really been fun to really- Thank you. Around. You're very welcome. It's really been fun to really pick your brain on a number of topics because you're a very multifaceted human being. And it's great to see the evolution, the progression and succession of what you've done as a being. So thank you. But God dang, man, I have to ask you as someone who's a female talent, a female personal trainer, and just really going into different levels and music aspirations, what have you, I have to ask you, what advice would you give to a lot of the young ladies out there that really want to pursue that goal, whether it be broadcasting, modeling, WWE, what advice would you give to the ladies on the company? <laughs> Get your ass up and work. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's my advice. Get your ass up and work. There's too many lazy people out there. 
first of all, perfectly said and bluntly said, because it's very true. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, well, sometimes you got to hit them with it where it hurts because a lot of people mm-hmm. have extra motivation. So beautifully, mm-hmm. that's Rochelle Lowen. And before we do close this out, for those who have not checked her out on social media, Rochelle, I'm going to have you promote the social media. Let everybody know, <laughs> let everybody know where we can follow you on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on everything under Rochelle Lowen. So just Google me. Yeah. All right. And I will say this is right now. Check out her fitness work. Check out her beautiful imagery and check out some videos because you are a beast, my friend. You are an absolute beast. <laughs> I am. I absolutely am. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Check out Rochelle's work. And folks, before I close this out, as I always say to end these shows, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Miss Rochelle, <laughs> I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Love it. Thank you.